Hey guys, so I'm super excited to share with you the creative cut and color that I recently showed on my Instagram. So if you guys don't follow me there, then follow me there. And let's get into the creative cut and color that I did. I'm so super excited to share it with you guys. Okay, so I started with the cut since there was a ton that was gonna get cut off. So I had to spray it down really good and then I pretty much got a general length idea and then I went in and I razor cut it. So first I took a bunch of sections down and I just cut them straight across, straight across, straight across. Um, and then I went back in with the razor cut in the same sections. I just resectioned it and I just cut it out. Everything that I did to the back, I also did to the front. majority of the sections in the back cut straight across I did go in with the razor as I had said so I re uh, section everything and then I just go in and I just razor the bottom so what I like about razor cutting is that you could distribute the weight exactly where you want it to be in the haircut which I think is really cool and um, yeah she has very 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 thick hair like I don't even know if this video does it justice so I had to do this otherwise the back of her head would have been like a huge puffy helmet it just her hair would have been too short for the thickness of her hair. So razoring it was a total necessity. And I personally love razor cutting. So it actually wound up working out really well. You never want to razor cut dry hair, which is why I had to spray the hair down. I pretty much had a saturate. Um, if you cut it dry, you'll see if you ever did it before, it kind of like bings back up. It's really weird. It like kind of looks like you tease the hair a little bit wherever you cut it. It just uh, doesn't sit well. It's just not nice. Um, so you definitely always want to have wet hair when you razor cut. Since this was going to be a very long process and I was going to have to wash and uh, dry her hair a bunch of times throughout it, I just kind of wanted to dampen the hair as much as I could, get it as wet as I could without having to wash it and then blow dry it um, before I bleach it. So this was just kind of a little shortcut of mine just to spray it down. I do go in at the end and cut it a little bit more just because that's when it's truly wet and I can get the true shape of what I want. This was really just to remove most of the bulk from the hair so that I can um, not waste products and only lighten the parts I wanted to lighten and only color the parts that were left on her head. You'll notice with this section, I cut it longer than the um, longest part that is there. And that is because I am going to go in and razor it a little bit on the ends just so that it falls in correctly and it sits properly. But um, I, I don't want, I didn't want any choppy pieces. I didn't want her hair to look like a choppy bob. I wanted it to very much look polished and um, smooth rather than choppy. So that is why these top pieces, I made sure to go a little bit longer than the haircut and then I just kind of razor cut the bottom. And then on the final piece, I actually don't razor it at all, which you'll see in a second. What I do is I just cut the top piece and I just kind of let it sit. And then later on I go in and I just uh, adjust as I need to. exactly what I was talking about this is the top layer in the back and I'm just gonna cut it and just let it do its thing then as I said before everything that I did to the back I am then doing to the front so I am going to cut it to the longest part to match the back and then I'm going to go in and razor it now it's time to bleach it so she did want to keep a darker root so I didn't have to go all the way all the way up to the root which was nice but I did have to do baby foils or baby lights so that means that you have to do very thin foils and literally do the entire head you could see the underneath doesn't have any foils on it. That's because it was too short where I did the super short layers because, again, I wanted to distribute the weight in the haircut the way I wanted to. So I did have to have some short pieces in there. So I did just put some bleach on, and at the end, I do put a foil over it just so that it'll lift. I wasn't too concerned about it because I did know she wanted dark roots, and since those pieces in the back are very short, they were going to be a little bit darker. But what I did was I just did, like, little slices and I, then I just um, saturated the hair as much as I could. I started with a low developer in the back, which was 9 volume, and then towards the front I did 20 volume, just because I knew it was going to take me a long time to get through the entire head. As I had said, her hair is very thick, and I wanted it to process as evenly as possible. Um, I didn't want the back to be too light and the front to be too orange. <music> getting tired.
tired of watching me do the same exact thing over and over again. This is literally what it's like. So you have to have patience not only as the client, but also as the colorist and the stylist. It is a long process, and that is why you want to start with a low developer. And you really never want to go above a 20 volume because you always want to keep the integrity of the hair. So, yeah, let's keep it going. bleach and then I also used the smart bond in the bleach and then at the end I did do conditioning and thank God because it did save her hair. This was what the hair looked like after one bleaching session which was good enough. For fashion colors you generally want it to be a white color but since we were doing a purple color on her hair it was more than okay for it to still have this yellowy tint to it and also the light above my station is very pink red so it does kind of look a little bit more orange than what it did in real life. I thought I had either Pravana purple or a L'Oreal purple, but I didn't. So I did have to go to Sally's and get these permanent color, which is the Ion. Um, it's in purple. So that is what I used on the roots, and I did use 20 volume with it because it is permanent. It did itch her head very much. She had a little bit of an allergic reaction to it. I don't think that's everybody, but she did. And the hair is about 90% dry because I wanted to make sure that everything took correctly. Since you're dealing with the roots, of course, you would do this the same way you would do a single process because in essence, that's what it is. So you're just sectioning it out and making sure that you get as little color on the ends as possible because this wasn't the um, goal color that we wanted for the ends. This is just what we wanted for the actual roots. So, you know, you section out each piece and you just do it right on the roots. head was done I did go through with a comb and I just kind of brushed it through just because I didn't want a harsh line of demarcation I didn't want it to look like roots and ends I kind of wanted it to blend a little bit better so I did go through each section and just kind of brush it down a little bit again just so that when I put the color on the end there's not like a harsh uh, separation between root and ends I kind of wanted it to flow nicely so that is what I opted to do <laughs> Also, it's a tense violet and here lies the problem when you're using products that you're not normally using sometimes they pick up a little bit different than you expected I expected a 6 VV to pick up very violet very vibrant but instead it picked up extremely pink like a hot pink and that was not the color that we were going for um, so what happened was I noticed it right away I noticed in the tube and I was like that's kind of weird why is it picking up like this and then I immediately took her to the sink and took everything down because it just wasn't the color that we wanted. We wanted it to be more of a purple color on the ends and it wound up being very, very pink. So I did have to do one additional step, which is the color intensity remover. And I put plastic over it. As you could see, that's like a hot pink that was not the right color. I did wrap it in plastic for a short amount of time and uh, like that's just not the right color. But I was mostly worried about the integrity of her hair, so I didn't leave it on the full time. So we just kind of had to deal with what we had. I am going to do a video in the near future showing you guys how we're going to transition this to the color that she truly wanted, which was more of a purple silver color on the end. So you guys can stay tuned for that. I did go in and clean up the ends, as you can see, um, just because I had a better view of what was going on. And I did blow dry it mainly just by taking the blow dryer and just blowing the hair, which is what I love about razor cuts. When it's cut correctly, the hair just falls into place, right? For the front, I did also use a round brush just to go through the sections really quickly, but then I did just take the blow dryer and blow the hair. 
um, and it just kind of fell right into place. So I'm going to show you the before picture and then you will see the after picture. So this was a seven hour process because of the little hiccup, it probably could have been six hours, but here you go. This is the before picture and then this is the after creative cut and color. I hope you guys like this video. Thank you so, so much for your love and support. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already and give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more like it. Until next time, work hard, dream big, eat cake. Bye guys.